Charles Power, director of scouting and rankings for us here at On3, the best in the business, put out an article on On3.com and said, these are the freshmen that I'm watching. It has a list of 15. I picked one, two, three, four, five of those guys that we got to watch specifically closely, but make sure you're locked in on that article. Uh, Charles Power, again, phenomenal work over there at On3. But who should we watch intently this coming Saturday? I think the obvious answer for the first guy we got to talk about, how about Arch Manning, quarterback at Texas? And the reason why we got to really pay attention to this guy is because there has been so much made about what he was at high school. Like, so much of what he did during his high school days was kept under wraps. Like, if you didn't really see, I mean, not didn't really, you didn't see him at the Elite 11, you didn't see him at the opening or OT7. Like, a lot of Arch Manning talk, a lot of the opinions about Arch Manning are pretty much regurgitated from what you've heard other people say. Yeah, he's good, but if he didn't have the last name Manning, then he wouldn't project as high. Like, there, there's so much speculation about Arch Manning. The beautiful part about spring games, the beautiful part about Arch Manning playing the spring game at Texas, we finally get to see it with our own eyes. You don't have to listen to Jimmy Bob 42 on Twitter. You get to take your own assessment and make your own opinion about Arch Manning based on what you see in the spring game. Now, I would say this. It'll be his first time in collegiate action. OK, so it's going to be a very big spot for him. The first time the public will really get to see Arch Manning. Let's take our time taking an assessment of him. This is a temperature, not an absolute. You're going to hear me say that a lot with spring football. Now, another reason why this is important. In all likelihood, Arch Manning is going to be the guy that leads you into the SEC if you're a Texas football fan. So the way that I look at this, this is kind of the preview to the movie. Again, Arch Manning, true freshman, been on campus for 37 minutes and lost his ID twice. Give it some time. What you see in the spring game will not be what he is when he takes his first snap in in-game action in a regular season game. But it's going to be fun to see it, man. We get to see number 16 on the field in the burnt orange. And I promise you, whenever he checks into the ball game and takes his first snap in the spring game, that place will be rocking. They've been waiting a very long time to see Arch Manning under center. Another guy that Charles mentions, Peter Woods, defensive lineman for Clemson. Matt Conley for Clemson Sports, the On3 Clemson site, has a really good article out right now about Peter Woods, where Dabo Sweeney was asked about Peter Woods and said, you know, what are his weaknesses? What can he work on? And Dabo Sweeney just kind of sits there for a second and then just says, none. <laughs> he doesn't have any deficiencies. Peter Woods is one of those guys that is going to help Clemson this coming season. Enrolled early, as all these guys did. Six foot two, 300 pounds. When you think about Clemson defensive linemen, they've got a pretty strong resume at that position. Is Peter Woods the next great one? Is he someone who's going to you know, be a top draft pick? It's a little bit early to talk about all that, but the fact that he's had such rave reviews during spring camp it's hard to not get excited. Now, what I really want to see from Peter Woods, I don't doubt he'll contribute this year for Clemson. I'm just confused as to where he will contribute on the defensive line. Because the defensive tackle spot, where you would imagine someone like Peter Woods would factor in, that's a little bit more of a deep spot for Clemson. They don't need a ton of help there. So do we see Peter Woods play a little bit on the outside of the defensive line? Do we see him come off the edge a little bit? I'm excited to watch that. Because I think regardless of... What you think about Clemson this coming season, the calling card for the past few years at Clemson has been the defense. Wes Goodwin going into his second season, how do they utilize a Peter Woods? And also, we're gauging for, for all these guys, but I mean, Peter Woods playing at the position he is on, on the defensive line at Clemson, how, how does he factor in when it comes to playing against college competition? He's done it during spring camp. Again, had great reviews, but how does he translate? We'll watch that one very, very closely. But again, anytime Dabo Sweeney says, no, this guy has no deficiencies, and he's a true freshman, he's an early enrollee, you have my attention. Okay, very, very, very simply put, you have my attention. Now, we got to talk about Ruben Owens here in just a second, but make sure you're subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel. We talk ball here every single day. We've had a ton of y'all join us in the last few months. Spring football's on and popping. There, there's no more time to be messing around. No more games to be played because they're about to play spring games. All right, if you catch my drift. Now, Ruben Owens, running back at Texas A&M. He was a top three back in the country coming out of the 2023 cycle. He's got some big shoes to fill. He's had great reviews behind closed doors, but Devon A-Chain was a 1,000-yard back. And so from Ruben Owens, 
I'm just curious to see how he is able to hit the ground running in the college game because in the SEC, you got to be able to run the ball, man. Otherwise, you're getting eaten alive. Especially at AM, with all the struggles they've had offensively, they leaned on Devon A. Chain to do a ton for them last season. How does Ruben Owens look? I don't need to see him be a game breaker. I don't need to see him have over 100 yards rushing in this spring game. That'd be nice. But does he look comfortable out there? Is he not, you know, is he reading his keys or is he just bouncing every other time and just relying on his physical gifts to try and get something done? If it's the latter, I, I get a little bit concerned. But again, it's a spring game. It's a glorified practice. But Ruben Owens is going to be somebody they lean on, I believe, this coming season in College Station. Will he be RB1? I don't know. But he's going to be a guy that you lean on in some way, shape, or form. Now, this next guy we got to talk about, I, I don't know if there has been this much hype around a freshman during spring practice that I can remember. And that's USC wide receiver Zachariah Branch. What I want to see for him is just how he, how he translates against college DBs. And we're, we're kind of saying the same thing for all these guys. How do they translate? But for Zachariah Branch... You saw him dominate at the high school level, at Bishop Gorman. You saw him dominate on the All-Star Circle. Um, the Polynesian Bowl, the Under Armour game, like he's been balling and dominating at every single stop he's been at to this point. And again, coaches are saying, hey, Zachariah Branch, he is the truth. Where does he factor in in the rotation for USC during the spring football game? And then how does he look relative to the kind of hype that has followed him during spring practice. He's going to be a guy that contributes now, whether it's punt return, kick return, playing in the slot. He's going to be a guy that helps USC this coming season. I just want to see how he stacks up in his first you know, live action in the Coliseum. But I'm telling you this, the more he and Caleb Williams get on the same page, just something else to watch for. Caleb Williams ad libs a whole heck of a lot. And he does that to his benefit, to USC's benefit. But when the play breaks down and Caleb Williams breaks contain, he's out on the run, the wide receivers have to be on the same page with him. And the way you get on the same page with the quarterback when he's ad-libbing is to have done it in practice for a period of time. They've done it for 14 practices, at least when they lead up to the spring game. How in tune is Zachariah Branch when the play breaks down? Because that could be where he really becomes a factor for USC. They got a lot of good wide receivers. I mean, Zachariah Branch is going to be one of them. The volume of receptions he gets remains to be seen. But I'm telling you, the timely plays that he makes for USC will be remembered. I promise you that. Last guy we got to talk about, the tight end from Georgia, Lawson Lucky. Now, Lawson Lucky, similar to Zachariah Branch, has been a hype machine all spring football long. I mean, the, the thing I want to watch, though, specifically for him for Georgia in this spring game, what is the inventory of his skill set? We know he can catch the football. He's got three receiving touchdowns from their last, I believe it was maybe two scrimmages ago. He's making waves behind closed doors because he had a big scrimmage with like three touchdown catches, making plays. He's progressing. He's not a finished product, but he's progressing. The thing I want to see is how he looks. Obviously, I want to see it with my own eyes, how he catches the football. But also, what is he like as an inline blocker? Because Georgia, you and I both know this, they like to play not one, but maybe two tight ends at a time. Brock Bauer is going to be one of them. Oscar Delp for sure going to be one of them. If Lawson Lucky can block effectively as well as catch effectively, that just adds another dimension to how flexible Georgia can be offensively. And the more flexible Georgia can be, the more dangerous they are. Like, that's as simple as it gets. Mike Bobo, I don't think, is going to reinvent the wheel offensively. Lawson Lucky, if he continues to trend how he has during spring football, will be a guy that rotate in there. So I don't expect him to overtake Oscar Delp and, and be tight end two behind Brock Bowers. But I do think you're going to see some Lawson Lucky this coming season. Also, he wears number seven. His last name is Lucky. Like, just a tremendous branding strategy by him, if that is a branding strategy. NIL, it's what you're meant for right there. So Arch Manning at Texas, get to see him with our own eyes. Everybody has a take. He should be a three-star if his last name wasn't Manning. I disagree with that wholeheartedly, but you get to see it in the spring game on the 40 acres. Peter Woods, Dabo Sweeney said he has no deficiencies. He's an early enrollee. That's ridiculous. Can't wait to see him in the spring game. Ruben Owens, big shoes to fill. A lot of production left by Devon A. Chain. How much does he look capable of making up for that? USC wide receiver Zachariah Branch lighting in a bottle. Fired up to see how he stacks up against the competition. And then Lawson Lucky, the inventory and flexibility of his skill set. 
could be a, could be a storyline to watch for this Georgia offense. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.